Rub up your engines! Well, if you've been following, Volkswagen's having a bunch of problems with their electric vehicles. What a surprise. Bad enough for Tesla that's been around a while. Realize that Tesla has four of the top five models, if you call it top, that are most likely to be recalled over a 30 year span. So, yeah, Volkswagen seems to be following that. They've had a bunch of recalls on their electric cars already and are just starting out here in the United States. They had to recall. Almost 20,000 of their ID.4s because the doors might just open while you're driving down the road. Turns out that water can get on this printed circuit board on the door handle and cause it to just fly open while you're going down the road. Now, this is why I tell people sometimes technology is too much. A door handle, right? Well, a door handle used to be it was a handle, pulled the lever, there was a rod, it would open the door hinge and away it would go. The latch would open up and you'd open the door, right? Now it's all electronic. Why? Why do we need electronic door handles? And then they might fly open while you're going down the road because water gets on them. Well, a lot of people may not understand, but the inside of your car doors is always getting water in them. If you open your car door and look on the bottom, you'll see there's a bunch of little holes. Those are water drain holes because the glass on your doors does not seal the inside of the door perfectly. Water gets in when it rains and it's got to drain through the door and come out the bottom. So if you put a bunch of electronic crap inside your car's door, guess what? It's going to eventually short out because there's water always going in there. It's not like you're inside the car where you sit. Put computers inside the car, inside the dash. It doesn't get wet there, right? But don't put them inside the door that they always get wet and water has to drain out of the bottom. But they did and it's shorting out. And of course, this is 2023. These are brand new cars. They're having problems with it. Imagine what's going to happen to these things as they get old and they really start to leak and the electronics really start to be breaking down. Their idea of electricity is going to save everybody. Hey, it's going to make us all pretty prisoners of electrification and when it breaks cost a fortune to fix or people can't figure out what's wrong. It's pretty easy to figure out when your brakes are worn out. You look at them you see look they're worn down to the metal. Great. Electronic stuff it can come it can go and since all the electronics in your car is tied in with the rest of the electronics trying to pinpoint where a problem's coming from can be really hard. You get a problem in the back of the car affects something in the front of the car. The more electrical stuff you throw in cars the bigger pain in the butt they are to fix and the more often they will break as they age, when they get wet, when they get corroded, right? I mean, these are brand new 2023s. And now the circuit boards are getting wet and popping out. What's going to happen when they get old? JB417 says, why do I get codes in my car? I got a Mitsubishi Eclipse with a V6 engine. They had a PO340 code and a PO403. I put a new EGR vacuum solenoid and the PO403 code went away. But now there's another code. Here's how your car works. As you drive down the road, every like minute and a half, couple minutes, it analyzes the whole system and then it starts all over again. And if after a few tries, if it finds the same problem, it flips a code. But once it flips that code, it stops analyzing until that code gets fixed. So you fixed one code and now another code can pop up because there's other problems. It's not that great of a system. The software isn't that great in cars. It's kind of backwards. It's nothing compared to what could possibly be done with today's computers. But they're old style computers and cars. They aren't that complex and they don't have the capability that any of the modern ones could if they really wanted to make them that way, right? So what's happened to yours is you got one code, you fixed it, now there's another code. And there might even be more hidden than behind there. And realize this too, the codes that you're talking about the PO codes, those are relatively generic. Each code could have the possibility of sometimes dozens of different things causing that code to pop. So you're going to have to figure out is this second code a new code that didn't exist before? And if it does, that means that the other code had just stopped the analysis. Once you fix that code, it can analyze further. It's like I tell people lots of times, they'll say if they have a code for oxygen sensor, they replace the oxygen sensor and then later these new codes come up. I explain, well, once it saw the oxygen sensor code, it stopped analyzing. Once you fix that, it could analyze further into the system, find other problems on it. You know, it's relatively complex interrelated software. The software itself isn't that great, but it's all jumbled amongst itself. Since it's not the greatest software in the world, they should have made it so that <coughs> keep that code isolated, the one you have, and keep analyzing the further ones. But in many cases, it'll stop at one and then it won't get any other until you fix that. PG Tip said, I changed the motor mount 
and now my engine won't start. The engine light is on with no codes, 12.6 volts on the battery, the engine's grounded, the headlights work fine, but it won't even crank. You change the motor mount, right? Change the motor mount, you gotta jack that engine way up in the air, take all that off. There are so many wires you could have damaged or disconnected. So start by following your wiring. You could have knocked something loose. Now when you did lift it up, let me ask you one question. Did you make the big mistake of working under there, jacking the engine up without removing one of the battery cables. Whenever you do big work like that, you want to disconnect one of the battery cables. Then there's no power going to the system and you won't short anything out. Let's say you didn't and you left the battery connected while it was jacked up in here. All kinds of damage can happen. A wire on the starter could have shorted off against the frame, could have touched something, and then wham, it could have wiped out your computer, could have blown fuses. So start by looking all around the work area, see if wires are pinched or crunched, and I mean you did it the lift up in there when you drop it back down maybe you broke a wire and crushed it down right also check all the fuses might have blown a fuse and this is a warning for anybody that's going to do any kind of work on a car that's relatively major like jacking a motor up putting motor mounts in always disconnect the battery first either cable it doesn't matter as long as you take it off and it's not going to touch the battery it's not going to hurt anything but if you leave it connected you got a live system you can short things out John Matthias says I got 2000 Chevy Volt it has the code for for low voltage on injector, P2147. We changed the computer, but it didn't work. What should I do? If you have low voltage going to an injector, you changed the computer, didn't fix anything, right? Well, let's hope you don't have some kind of a wiring short, because if you have a wiring short between the computer and the injector, and you went and changed the computer, that could have fried that next computer. Anytime you have a problem and you're thinking about changing the computer before you do you have to check all the wiring because if you have a wiring short say going to that injector and you replace the computer with a new computer that wiring short will destroy the new computer computer circuitry doesn't have much fuse at all the main part of the computer will have a little 5 amp fuse or something on it right and usually if something blows it'll ruin the computer before it pops the fuse anyway but all the outputs of the computer are on fused the power going to your fuel injectors there's no fuse on that if it shorts out destroy the computer really quickly now you could have a bad injector because if the injector's bad it'll show low voltage because it can't flow if your injector's not working right it's not going to flow through it and you'll get a low voltage reading because it's not flowing right or if the wiring is bad between it so you got to check the wiring first I, you made a mistake just going out and buying a computer because like I say you got a wiring short and you replace the computer it's going to destroy that expensive computer right away because there's a short in it you always have to test like I say any kind of computer thing you might think it's a computer problem first you unplug the computers and check the wiring and yeah there's a lot of wires and that's why electrical work is expensive they would all have to be tested to do it right you know you guess with the computer and let's pray maybe it's just a bad injector and that hasn't destroyed your new computer and it's not a wiring chart but check the wiring first if you don't find any problems change the injectors and pray it was the injector and not something else that shorted out the computer because it will short out your new computer when you wasted your money you'd be spinning around can't be the computer well it could be if there's a short and even if you fix the short now your new computer is going to be aging 666 says, are Royal Enfield good motorcycles? All right, Royal Enfield was a British motorcycle from a long time ago, but then they bought them in India, and they make them in India. They're cheaper made. Originally, they only made the old-fashioned one-cylinder, but now they got a 650 twin that actually is like an old British motorcycle. It's fun for driving around in, and it's so much cheaper than equivalent Triumph, like the Triumph cost about three times as much. So, you know, and they're reasonably reliable. For the money, you get your money's worth, right? You know, that's just how it is, and he says, what, motorcycle brand should you buy? Avoid the Russian ones, they're not too hot, right? If you want the best, get a Japanese motorcycle, doesn't matter, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki, they all make excellent motorcycles. State Line Texas says, 2008 Nissan Quest, what are your thoughts? I'm not a big Nissan fan, but the Quest, of course, you can generally get them especially used, you're saying, oh wait, a lot cheaper than you're going to get a Toyota or a Honda, they're much better made, but all it comes down to is the money 
and what you expect to get out of it. Let's say you can buy that Nissan, but you'd have to pay 10, 12, 15,000 more for an equivalent Toyota or Honda. Maybe not a bad idea getting the Quest, right? But if the price range is close, I'd always go for the Toyotas and Hondas. They're better made. Liquid Mice 9 says, Scotty, I got no six matrix. You've worked on the odometer reads 299,999, but won't go further. Toyota knows about it, but won't fix it. What can I do? They know about it. They're not going to fix it because it's old. It's an 06, right? I mean, doesn't really matter how many miles your car has. The speedometer still works, right? They still work, but it just doesn't tell you how many miles you're putting on. Try your trip odometer. If your trip odometer works, just push your trip odometer. When you change the oil, push the trip odometer. They don't touch it. And then when it gets to 5,000 miles, change the oil. That's the best thing. Otherwise, you'd have to buy a new dash assembly because it's the dash assembly that breaks on it and they cost a fortune. So if your trip odometer still works, hey, reset it and every 5,000 miles, then reset it again. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.